Toho brings back everyone's favorite giant monster with a film that won Best Picture in Japan in 2017. That's right, folks. Today I'll be discussing a Godzilla movie, and here on this channel, that means... It's Godzilla Tuesday. Before we get into the review, I want to bring your attention to a cool project called Girls Who Love Monsters. Girls Who Love Monsters is a collaborative book that features stories and artwork from various female artists and authors to showcase the love that they have for monsters, how they've been influenced by their love for them, and to break the societal mold for monster fandom. I myself, being a girl who loves monsters, very much support this project. I've had a couple people say to me recently, oh, we need more girls in the fandom, or it's nice to see a girl in the fandom, because it's so rare to see. This book is meant to help change that by providing an outlet for female monster fans to express their love for the genre. I'm not in the book, but I would like to see this come to life, so if you can, please do support Girls Who Love Monsters on Kickstarter. I'll leave a link in the description below. Alrighty, back to Shin Godzilla. I asked the people of Twitter to share their thoughts on Shin Godzilla, and 90% of the responses were singing the film's praises, even going as far as to say it's their favorite Godzilla film, or that it's the best Godzilla film since the original. But what do I think? Do I think this film deserves all the hype it gets? Well, bear with me till the end, but I do have some mixed feelings. The Japan Coast Guard boards an abandoned yacht on Tokyo Bay, looking for survivors. They're interrupted by the presence of a giant creature who soon comes ashore and causes panic as it squirms through Kamata. We learn later that the creature's name is Godzilla, and he's constantly evolving. Having never encountered anything like this before, Japanese politicians and nerds alike scramble to figure out how to stop it before America steps in with a nuke. So this is the first time Toho full-on hit the reset button on the Godzilla franchise retelling the original story in a modern setting. This film really brings Godzilla back to his roots as an allegory, and it does it really well. The story alone is a love letter to the original film. Hats off to Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi for excellent writing and direction. Oh boy, here we go. So our main character seems to be Rando Yaguchi, a young and ambitious politician who wants to be prime minister someday. Kayako Ann Patterson has similar goals to Yaguchi, only she wants to be President of the United States. Then we have the Prime Minister, the guy with the glasses, the guy with the towel around his neck, the short-haired girl who never smiles till the end, the guy in the suit, the other guy in the suit, this woman, that guy... Okay, there are a lot of characters in this film, and we get very little time to know any of them. In my opinion, this is where the film falls a bit short. I personally like to feel something for the characters I'm watching, but... These all feel like plot devices as opposed to people. I've heard it said that we're not supposed to be focused on the characters, and yeah, I get what you mean, but the original film at least took some time to develop the characters, just enough to make us care about them without taking away from the main story. This film doesn't do that. Not even a little. Too bad, because I think that could have made the film even better than it already is. In my review of Gojira, I mentioned that the love triangle between Emiko, Agata, and Dr. Sarazawa helped add tension to the already tense situation of Godzilla destroying everything in his path. Now, I'm not saying Shin Godzilla needed a love triangle. I'm just saying it could have given us something to care about. For example, if they had maybe established a mentor-student relationship with Yaguchi and the original Prime Minister, I feel like it would have had more impact when the Prime Minister eventually dies. Just a little something to give us a reason to care. All of the actors are really good, but it's a shame they weren't given more to work with. No, oh, hey, my sleep paralysis demon got his own movie. Good for him. This is one of the creepiest, if not the creepiest, looking Godzilla designs yet. And for the first time in Toho's history, he's completely CGI. In some scenes, you can't even tell. I'm not a huge fan of his new abilities. I like that they tried something new, but it just kind of struck me as strange. And Godzilla looks great and all, but he just kind of stands there most of the time. And if he's not standing, he's walking. At times, it didn't really 
feel like Godzilla. You know what I mean? Like, I see that it's Godzilla, but he's just a zombie. But I forget about all of that when I think about this scene. I don't usually talk about the score, but Who Will Know is apparently written from Godzilla's perspective. I think knowing that caused me to have more respect for this film than I had when I first saw it in the theater. Shiro Sugisu. Well done, man. Right up there with the Fukube. Overall, this film is okay. It had some really fantastic scenes, but there are some parts where I felt kind of underwhelmed. That being said, this film wasn't made with an American audience in mind, so admittedly, most of the political satire went right over my head. It's not my favorite Godzilla movie, but it's definitely worth checking out if you're more into the serious kaiju films. That does it for this video. Subscribe to my channel for more kaiju content. Like this video if you had a good time with me here today. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with me and get an idea of what I have coming up next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.